And so you're at your audition. Someone opens the door for you. You walk in. The door slams behind you. Slam. And that some, someone from the other side of the curtain says, may we please hear the first excerpt from Mozart's G minor symphony? And then there is silence. And then you hear, Again, there's more to that excerpt than just that series of notes which were excerpted from the score to become an audition piece, to be played correctly and to get to the job to be played incorrectly. And all that can be said is your number is not read, as one of the people uh, deemed to make the next round. It's painful to realize that, that you. Uh, your claim to fame is not having your number read, but such is the audition procedure. And, um, but how best to deal with that? Is to always maintain your love of excerpts and, and love of music, and to remember that an excerpt is excerpted from the original, and what, what was really happening? Well, first of all, what's really happening is that particular excerpt begins the development section. And what is the development section but the development of this theme? <laughs> And so how can you develop that theme until you know exactly how you want it to go? So what you do is in the privacy of your own practice room, you grab the score and you read that thing. It doesn't matter how good or how bad or in tune or out of, out of tune it that was. It matters that you decide just how you want that melody to go. And when you know how you want that melody to go, then this. <laughs> But there's more than that. There's more than that. What else is happening at that particular time? For, of course, the development begins in a different key, so you're not in the key of G minor for that particular tune. You're in the key of E minor. Uh, but more than that, you're in the midst of a fugue. And just remember that, you know, in all, as bassists have to have very good accompanying reflexes, we have to know, for instance, when we are the primary line and when we are not. And since it's a fugue, um, I'm going to now attempt to play Oh, the, the, sort of the, the, the fugue part as my colleagues play the bass part. And one thing further, within, just even within, within a series of repeated notes, there is music there. For instance, and, and I hope I'll try to d demonstrate this as well on, on, you know, from, by taking some chances on this bass, um, this. <laughs> excerpt, there are four bars of, of repeated eighth notes, repeated A, but they're not just that. There's and because of that, those A's do not, they're not exactly the same. And et cetera, et cetera. Anyone behind the screen, and I speak of someone who has been behind the screen for four decades, anyone behind the screen hears that. We hear when a player is playing alone, but they are responding to their inner ear and, and to an informed inner ear. And um, I'll, I'm, I'm now going to attempt to give you some more information. music even in repeated notes. You don't have to teach it, but we'll know when it's, we'll know when you hear it. And make sure that you hear it, inform yourself, take those chances, go to the score, and forever remember that Mozart did not write this music to make a bass player's life miserable. That Mozart wrote this music 
because he could not help it, because it was just flowing out of him. He had to express himself, and I try never to forget that Mozart did not write this music to make my life miserable. He wrote it to enrich my life, and so he has.